After introducing all these theoretical concepts, I now want to give you a more concrete example of an event-driven and event-sourcing architecture. And as you know me, I like coffee. So we're going to talk about a scalable event-driven coffee shop. That means you have a coffee shop with a barista and beans and customers and all that. And we want to show how we can do the architecture in an event-driven way and therefore modeling an order, a coffee order. So you go in as, as a customer, you want to order a coffee and then I want to show you the process how all that is managed. So imagine we have three, I would call them modules now. Like uh, we have the orders module where the orders are stored. We have the beans where the bean storage is. So which beans do we have and how many do we have left? And we have the barista module um, who will then prepare the coffee. So imagine we have one call, call from the outside, the order coffee. This will be to the right side of the orders module as we want to write a new order. And then as this is an event driven architecture here, some events happen. That means a new order gets placed. That happens in the orders write module and then in event gets published, the orders placed. Again, events are immutable and happened in the past. So this is a fact. The order has been placed by the customer. Then the customer now got in the last call, this is a void call, got the acceptance. So everything's fine. No error, no exception. The order has been placed. It has been published reliably. And now the customer can wait. Having that said, the event then has to be consumed by the other things. So, for example, what could go wrong when we place an order? There could be no beans, right? So you want to have special beans and they're just not there anymore. They're out of stock. And so we want to validate. That means we go to the storage and look if we still have beans. Having that said, this is again the transaction that is split up in several transactions. So we first tell the customer, OK, fine, we'll take care of it. And then we actually see if we still have beans. So the order placed event gets consumed now by the beans module, by the beans right side, because there is an event handler that subscribes and is interested in various events. In that case, the order place, because when a new order comes in, we want to validate if the beans are available. So we call validate beans internally. That is, um, that is a command in the beans right side. And then if they are available, then we fire a new event order beans validated. And now it goes back to the orders because we know, okay, as soon as the beans are there validated, then we know that the order can be done. So we accept the order then. That is um, another event handler now in the orders right module that accepts the order. It updates the internal representation of what is cached, the internal um, view on the um, order, orders right side. And then a new event order accepted is fired. And now the third module comes in, the barista, because the barista is only interested in accepted orders. They don't have to care about the placed orders because we don't know yet. But as soon as an order accepted, the coffee brew can be started. So we say, barista, please make some coffee. That is subscribed to the order accepted event. So everything's, everything here happens by um, consuming events and by having event handlers that then fire internal methods. And then the methods internally check whether all that is available. And depending on that, the internal representation gets updated. And more important, the event gets fired. What happened in the past? So we start the coffee brew. And again, we have an event coffee brew started. And so on and so forth. So now I hope you get the story how the communication between that um, systems work slash it could be one system. So the communication is done in an asynchronous way, but it is reliable if you look at the whole picture. So sooner or later, we will be there at our order. 
And now, as this coffee brew is started, we have to update the order because then if the customer uh, asks the order system, oh, it's already started, right? So we want to keep track of the um, of the state and that is just uh, also an event handler that updates the internal status. And as soon as the status is updated, we want to have the event as well because we want to track everything that happens. And later on, we want to know that the order has been started. And um, the same is true for the beans. So now we can fetch the beans from the bean store and then beans fetched is, um, is published as well. And so on and so forth. And then the coffee brew eventually is finished um, as soon as the barista is finished and we can update the order as well. And then eventually the barista delivers the coffee and then the order is delivered. And that's basically it. So again, the communication is done via events and all we need are event um, consumers, event handlers that call internal commands, that call internal methods, that then up operate on the internal representation and fire events. And this is how it's done. And the most important thing, as I said in the right beginning, if your event um, gets published, so if the order can be placed, uh, was placed in very first time, then we have to accept it. And if it's accepted, then the um, customer can rely that something happens. So another path would be that the, uh, the beans in the first place were not there. And then in another event, uh, order failed, beans not available or something gets fired. That means our order is then canceled and that's it. That's the end of the story. And then you see the barista doesn't even have to do anything. So these modules, um, um, are just inter uh, interested in specific kind of events and they are separated in write and read responsibility. So what we could ask if we want to read now, we could ask the orders module, what is the state of my order that was um, created in the first place? And we could ask the beans, how many beans do we have left of a certain type and so on and so forth. And well, we don't have to ask the barista anything, uh, maybe how busy they are currently. And this is um, the example I want to uh, showcase you. And in the next episode, we will finally touch some code.